Hello, gentle people. I am thrilled to welcome the warmth of summer and to welcome you to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm Hazel, a self-taught resin artist, and I enjoy sharing how I create the items that I sell in my growing Etsy shop and my Shopify stores. I hope that as you watch this tutorial, you pick up some useful ideas and tips to enhance your creativity. So I received um, two Shopify orders last week from the same customer. The first one was to create a sea turtle charcuterie board, similar to the one you see pictured here online. However, this turtle has a hot pink shell and the customer wanted their sea turtle um, to be blue, to have a blue shell. Their second order was for a complimentary beverage coaster set. So I already made um, the video on how I created that matching beverage coaster set. That's video number 120, the one just before this. Um, I didn't plan on doing a video on creating the charcuterie board, but into the process, I actually decided to share. So this tutorial actually begins at step four, placing the sea turtle artwork on the charcuterie board. But let me try to um, go back and uh, reconstruct the first steps. Um, you are looking at the list of materials that I use to create the sea turtle charcuterie board. And you can go back and like read that at your leisure. But the first step, um, whenever I do a charcuterie board is to prep the board. And that means that I tape the back of the board with painter's tape and I paint the area that's going to have artwork with um, gesso. That's to prevent the wood from showing through and to make the colors more vibrant. The uh, second step was to actually paint the background. So I used Master's Touch acrylic paints that you see before you. I did the ultramarine, the sky blue, the viridian. Uh, I did titanium white. I also used the Artist Loft. God, I'm looking at that and I can't read what it says through the purple streak. Um, it's metallic. What is that? Metallic cobalt blue. And then I also used an Artist Loft iridescent medium in white to give the board some, some sparkle. I painted the background with a brush and then I went back and blended the colors using an inflated balloon that I dabbed in the paint. And I then created and printed the sea turtle on water slide paper. And that's actually where we are going to begin. Um, yeah, that's where this tutorial begins. All right, so we got the background. We got the background painted. And you see, ooh, our turtle image. And we have now printed that turtle on water slide paper. And so I am going to trim away the excess, slide this into the water, and see if this works. We're gonna cut all, uh, cut right as close even a little, about an eighth of an inch. It's 
So there's our blue turtle. The request was for a blue turtle. So there's our blue turtle. And so what we're going to do now is take our turtle and we're going to dip him in some water. And let him set in some water for about a minute or two. all the paper good and wet and if we have done this correctly then when we go to if we have done this correctly when I take this turtle out of the water the artwork should slide this is called water slide paper so the artwork should slide off. So let's see what we've got. Okay, so I am going to take this out of here. Let's see whether or not we, so if we did it right. All right, my arm's in your way. Okay, well, we've got him there. We need to try and get this straightened out. Okay, let's see. I want to let's let this um, let's try and let's try and wet this up. This part is good. That flipper. So this is, let me see. I need this is folded under here. curled so let's uncurl that curled let's uncurl that okay okay so he is there so the water slide paper worked just fine let me move the water out my way okay and so now we need to take a towel and blot just blot some of this water and you can see the wet spots on the paper towel 
as we blot the water. And then we'll allow this to dry. And once it dries, we'll come back in and we'll embellish it. I am going to paint it with some acrylic paint. Okay, let's see, I have an air bubble there, 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 there. Got a couple of bubbles. I have to try and work out. Let's see. Let's see if we can push you. Push you, push you, push you. Again, the, the issue is not to tear. Push on this hard enough to tear your artwork. Okay. Okay, so we're going to just let this dry for a couple of hours and then we'll come back in and I'll start painting. So we're gonna do some glitter, do the shell in glitter and then we'll use extreme sheen acrylic paint to make the um, flippers pop. Alrighty. Let's let that dry, but I like that. I like my turtle. All right, this is where we begin to have some fun. And I think the hardest part of this step is figuring out what colors you want to use. So I have a sapphire, I have a sapphire, I have a deep sapphire, I have an aquamarine. So I think I'm going to start with the deep sapphire. And these are extreme sheen paints. And so I am going to paint uh, I'm going to start by painting the, this part of the shell and then when we paint it we are then going to go back and add some glitter to it. So we're just going to paint and this paint is acting basically as varnish. Instead of putting varnish or glue on here, I'm putting paint on here. And while that's dark, we're not gonna worry about that. And again, the purpose of this paint is not just to paint this, but to give our glitter something to stick to. That's what we're really trying to do, is create a surface for our glitter. So that this shell has some texture. So we've done that and then I had this kind of green glitter um, and I think I'm going to go with this bluer glitter. So we're going to just sprinkle sprinkle this glitter on here generously and then I like to just take a piece of paper and just press to make sure my glitter is in there and then and then we need to get rid of the excess glitter this board is huge
this board is huge. It's hard to do this. Ah. When the board is this big. Wee. using my toothbrush to shook into this paper and we put this back into our container. And so then we just take our paintbrush and kind of sc scoop between those lines to make sure that those dividers between the shells stand out. And again, this has texture. This um, I just sweep all of that, sweep all of that away. So we can see our lines and I'll vacuum this. I'll vacuum this after. Um, dries. Okay, and so now we are going to take that same sapphire and we are going to use the smaller brush and we're just going to go over these spots that are lighter. This is not glitter, this is just to give it some, some gleam here. So we're not necessarily matching colors. We're not, we're not trying to match per se. We're using the colors that exist as a guide. All right, let's see. Yeah, I think that's good for this for now. Let's do a little bit more over here. Okay, so let's put this back in here. Let's come back to this. Let's let that dry. Okay. This has dried some, or I guess they dried. So we are going to get rid of the excess glitter. Uh, next colors. Um, I have some glitter pens. 
and I wanted to see what the blue glitter pen looks like. So I don't know how this will work. Let's see. Oh, that's almost the same as as the um, that's almost the same as that. Uh, that's not really. That's not different. Well, but since I have it in my hands, what the heck? Some some little little highlights, basically. But yeah, this didn't do much. yellow does anything it's okay So where I have yellow, just kind of touching it up with this. Get some yellow in here. Okay, and a little bit in here. Now let's do some yellow through there. And all we're trying to do is just add some highlights here. And then let's see. Let's see what happens if we put some orange on here. Uh, okay, let's just... Orange through there, and there. All right, um, as opposed to yellow. Let's uh, see what happens with that a little bit. not what I planned on. A big old blob of black with an air bubble. Well, we're not going to touch that. We're going to leave that just like it is. But we are going to touch these up a little bit. Now I'm scared to use this. I don't want that to happen twice. I'm trying to use the black. Uh, I don't know. I'm scared of this black. I am thinking instead of painting these and adding glitter 
I have some shells and I think it would be real cool to have this back done in shells. So, oh, I think it would be real cool instead of putting glitter on here to actually put shells on there. This would qualify me as a mixed, this would qualify me as a mixed media artist. I am going to go over these lines. I don't know that it'll make a difference. No, it doesn't look like it'll make a difference. No, actually it makes them darker. I need a lighter color. That's not making a big difference. Um, so what we're going to do is get my Gorilla Glue, and we're going to start. Um, That's cool. Now, instead of having glitter, let's just do some real shells. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. I'm liking that. Yeah, we've got a tortoise shell that has shells on it. Uh, this is like when they do the, um, what do you call it? When they do the brickwork and they cut, start cutting the pieces to fit. Oh my goo, gosh, all oh my glue is dripping out over here. All uh, oh my glue is dripping out. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is really more symbolic.
just tuck it in there. Excuse me. Okay, I need to see. Oh, let's see this. This is similar to a mosaic. Okay, so we gotta do the back. Let's see. I found perfect okay so I'm satisfied I've got one little spot right there that needs a oh we need a triangle right here let's 
the stick. That that's a little a little big, but I eh, will use it anyway. Okay, so I'm liking that, but now I'm kind of wanting some glitter on the flippers. I don't know, the flippers need a little, little something, something. I'm thinking, I am thinking... Or is that satisfactory? Um, I'm just thinking where I now have all this texture here, it seems like there should be some texture here. So I think I am going to put paint on here and add some glitter down here. I'm just not satisfied that now that I have all that texture there, I don't have texture down here so we use the sapphire earlier so we're going to use the deep sapphire a little bit of deep sapphire do I have a oh I can use the tinsel glitter let's mm -hmm. let's see said the blind man let's Pencil glitter might be too big. see what happens. So again, I like to take a piece of paper and just press down to make sure that that's in there. We need to do the hard part. Lift this board up. Oh yeah, that's different. That's different. Um, but now that I've done... Oh! Put a little bit on this flipper. Seems like it, this flipper needs a little bit. So let's let's just let's just do this flipper. And again, we're not necessarily doing like where it's boat hack. We're not really following the colors. We're just trying to add some texture. We're just adding texture to this.
yeah I think I like that maybe we need a little bit of glitter here and maybe a little bit of glitter there regular glitter I painted these but again now that I'm looking at it I'm thinking and actually let's put some glitter on his head I painted this but a little bling on his head's not gonna hurt anything and some glitter some bling it's funny I painted this but now it's like ah I wanted to say a little more so we had um, we had the dark blue so let's go with a lighter. Whee! Of course, this would be nicer if this were in a shaker. That's probably why these were on sale. <laughs> his eye oh no I wasn't paying attention oh that's not good I got glitter in his eye I'll have to come back once this dries and then paint that but uh, yeah I'm I'm satisfied so let's do some I think that's the way we're gonna leave it we'll have to come back in after this dries and vacuum up the excess but I'm liking him like he is I like him so yeah I'll come back in I think I'm gonna take the brush and hit this edge here Right. I'm going to call that done. As I said, we're going to have to go back and um, vacuum this after it dries to get rid of all the extra glitter that's on there. Okay, but that's that's our turtle. Um, after this dries, then I'll have to seal it with resin 
Uh, so we need to come back in here, vacuum this uh, to get all the excess. I have to redo his eye and then we will just vacuum the excess and then we can put resin on this and seal it. Okay, I have these um, yogurt cups here on my table, and these are to elevate our board. <clears throat> so we're going to put our board up here. Everything is dry, so now we need to pour a clear coat. We need to pour a clear coat to seal all of this. So I have marked my measuring cup uh, for 50 and 100 milliliters. So we are going to pour 50 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And 50 milliliters of the Part A resin. Okay, so we have poured our resin and we know that we mix for five minutes. So there's our timer. Okay, we have mixed our resin. And so all we need to do is just pour this on here. Now, the thing is, um, two things. One, I don't want the resin poured on top of the shells. So I um, am using my, my uh, Root Rescue squeeze bottle. I've got a bunch of these. And I've never done this before, but I'm going to try and just take the root touch-up bottle and squeeze the resin in between the shells. That's, that's my thinking. So, and resin is self-leveling, so I'd be here pouring all day trying to get all of this to level out to that. So we're going to pour some resin in here. And I've never done this before, so we're just going to learn together, see if this will squeeze out of here. And let's try squeezing this. I mean, if some gets on the shelves, it's not a big thing. But I really don't want it on the shelves. And then thought of a way to squeeze and get it between the shelves. Okay, so I need a toothpick. I already see that some of these are going to be harder to do than others. Okay, well I think my, I, my, my idea appears to be working. So my thinking was okay. That really should have a shell in there, but it doesn't, so.
don't like that spot right there. I'm gonna have to find a piece of shell to go in there. I think I have. I think I have them all. I don't like that spot right there. Let me find. Mm. Okay, let's see. All right, it's a little large, but it's shell, so we're not going to worry about it. Okay. Alright, so let's just get rid of the rest of this. And so now we're just going to pour The rest of that, and then we're just going to take our palette knife and just spread this. I am really pleased with the way the shells on the turtle turned out. You have 30 minutes working time. And if I push the resin over the edges now, it's just gonna run drip down. And so we're gonna give this a chance to thicken some before we push it over the edge, because then we want it, when we push, we want it to stay. We don't want it to run down. So we're just pushing this right to the edges. Let's get in there. I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful. Remember I messed up that turtle's eye. The other thing is when we use the heat gun, the resin spreads. And so it's going to the edges anyway. Okay, so now we're going to hit this with the heat gun. I like that. Okay, now see how this resin is already running, has already started pushing there. I only poured it to here. Because like I said, when it heats up, it's going to spread, and that's already spreading uh, to the border over there. So once we heat it, then we can push it a little bit. But again, that's already at that border. 
and this edge is um, raggedy. This is not a perfectly smooth edge. I didn't want it that way because when the water runs up onto the sand, it is never just a straight line. can't see it but the resin has started running over the edges back here Okay, so now I'm just going to take what's left in here and just slide it right around the edge. This is not doing the edge, this is just giving it something to stick to when I come back in about 20 minutes and do the sides. But again, if you do them now, it's just going to drip down. Again, you have people that will tape on the sides. I like my color to run off the sides. So when you have this on the table and you're looking at it, you're not looking at wood. The color continues and it just, the continuum just gives it a really nice finish look to it. So we're just going to put a little, let's put a thin coat on the sides here. This won't drip off because it's not thin enough. It's not thick enough to. Ooh, this will not drip off because it's not thick. It's just like a coating, so that when I come back and put the thicker resin on the sides, it has something to stick to. like a glaze this is this is the equivalent of a glaze and then when I come back and I want to put it on heavier it's got something to stick to So I will be back in about 15 minutes to do these sides. So we're just going to take our palette knife and move 
move that back. All right, so I'll be back. Um, actually, let me wipe that. Just wiping this edge. With a paper towel dipped in some alcohol. Okay, so I will. Mm. I will be back in about 15 minutes. to take the cover off of this. That is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. That is gorgeous. That's gorgeous. That is just the way I wanted it. And it makes the turtle look like he's underwater. So what we need to do now oh, to finish this is get rid of the tape that's on the back and then sand these edges. And the quickest way to do that is to apply some heat. So we're going to use our heat gun and we are going to warm this up. And this should peel off, and what doesn't peel off, we'll use a razor to get the rest. table. This board is huge. in the camera but I only taped up to this I only taped up to this point and yet I actually ran my design up here so I have this rim of resin right here so we're gonna heat that and take a razor blade and scrape that off Now 
Now, when I tape, I always tape slightly inside so that this um, resin runs over the edge and then I go back and I take my razor and I just lift that edge off before sanding. So again, heat is our best friend. Okay, so that's done. And then what we do now is we take our sander and we make sure that this edge is perfectly smooth. So I need my mask. Okay, so what I was about to say, oh, this board's so heavy, is that before I deliver my boards, I always put um, my brand on them. So let me go, and I have a little cheap brand. I don't have one of those nice, um... okay, so on the bottom of my board, I try and It's not smoking. Oh, well, there you go. You got half of it on there. So Sparrow Art Vibes is on the board. And then the very last thing we do, ooh, before we prepare it for, before we give it to the customer, if you have a wooden cutting board, you should ideally uh, oil it at least once a month, uh, every couple of months. The oil keeps the wood um, supple. Uh, it also keeps bacteria from growing in the wood. Uh, I use, boy, to look at the, the label on here. I use 13 Chefs. Uh, it says food grade mineral oil, and I apply it with my fingers not with a cloth and that's because I don't want the cloth to absorb all of the oil. Before I give this to the client, I oil the board for them. Just a little bit of oil goes a long, long way. And again, some people use a cloth I don't use a cloth because I found that the cloth absorbs, soaks up a lot of the oil, and I use more if I use my fingers. I do a better job. And I do oil around the edge. And this board, I don't know if you noticed it when it was turned over. Let me just flip this back over. Oh. This board has a juice groove on the other side. So what I always say to customers is you use the back side for cutting and prepping. 
Um, so again, if you have like meats or, or vegetables where the juice is going to run, it's not going to run off on your table because it's going to be caught by this big juice groove. Um, but in the meantime, and then you serve, you serve on the decorative side. So I put this oil on here and I'm going to leave this oil set so it can soak in. And then tomorrow, before I wrap this for my customer, I'll wipe any excess oil off that didn't soak in. But that's it. This is, um, for all intents and purposes, this is done. But I am super pleased with the way this turned out. Yeah, this is nice. Good job, Hazel.